months. It doesn't take much, right? So if you can make one person's day every day, humans are really only motivated by two things. It's to avoid pain or to see pleasure. Coming up on The Melanin Money Show. People are twice as likely to fear loss over, over winning. Play not to lose, lose than play, to, play win. to win. When you know your audience in and out, then you know what their quirks, you know what makes them tick, you know all their pain points. And as a result of that, it creates this really hyper-focused tribe or community of people who all have the same problem. Now you have this community of people who are able to kind of mastermind with each other because they all have the same problem or the same goal, and it might just be at different places on the journey. If your friends are not helping you win, you need to find new friends. If you can't help me win, you can't be my friend. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Melon and Money Show. Um, we are we are in New York uh, still, and I just an inside inside look on our on our lives. So I don't own a coat, and so I came <laughs> to New York. I'm like, gee. I need you to bring a coat for me. He's like, all right, cool. I'm like, I also need you to bring a hat for me because I ain't no hat. All right, cool. And like, his relationship bank is so full right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I feel so indebted to this man. So um, that's just an inner circle, an inner look in, into how our lives are going right now. But we're in New York. We love it. Um, having some fun here, man. Are we stepping out tonight? We stepping out tonight. Okay, we stepping out tonight. Not, not drinking. But we not drinking, drinking, but we stepping out tonight. All right. Um, another another inside look, which makes it even more the relationship bet even more full, is Carter has a habit of forgetting to return the stuff that you give him. Right. So we were in Jamaica. He's like, "Yo, I need a hat for the night." I'm like, "Okay, cool. I'm gonna borrow my hat." I forgot to get the hat, so I said, "Hey, bro, just uh, next time I see you, just uh, just uh, just, just send me the hat." I, I get this random uh, uh, Apple Pay for hundred dollars. I'm like, "Why you send me Apple Pay for hundred dollars?" I'm like, "Bro, I lost that." But I told him before I gave him the hat because he lost something else. I said, yeah. "Bro, don't." Don't lose, lose the hat because it's sold out. You can't. I know. So like, but just, just so you know, yeah. As I told you before, I don't just lose your. I lose my own stuff too. So it's not like I just don't <laughs> care about other people's stuff. It's just that I'm just naturally irresponsible. So understood. I'm going to return this hat. I'm going to return this coat. Um and and, and all will be right. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's he's he trying to hold the Rolex as, as collateral. Yeah, I was like <laughs> the analogy I gave him. I was like, you know, when people got bad credit, they got to pay a security deposit, right? I was like, you have bad credit with returning people's stuff. So I That's need true. some I need some collateral okay. to ensure that I get my my, my suit supply peak lapel. Okay, it jacket. Might, it, back. Might, it might look better on me though. Nah, I wouldn't go that far, Bucka. <laughs> I wouldn't. Go, I, I know it fit good, but I wouldn't go that far. But anyway, uh, so today we are gonna have some fun. If you couldn't tell. Um, oh. We're going to talk about, it's going to be a casual episode, man, because one of the, the good things about, you know, broadening your circle is you have other people who can pour into you, other people who give you ideas. You don't have to think of all the bright ideas, right? Mm -hmm. So we decided to highlight just some, not all. So if we don't mention you in this episode, that doesn't mean that you didn't give us no game. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. We just wanted to highlight a few folks who, uh, of our friends who have dropped some gems on us that we Our friend tours. Friend tours. Friend tours. Um, they've dropped some gems on us that we've been able to use in our business and our everyday life. And as Carl likes to say, we get you got three times we're gonna give you credit for. After that, it's mine, mine, brother. It's mine. It's mine. And just a lesson before we go into the lessons: if your friends are not helping you win, you need to find new friends. Big facts, right? Like, if you can't help me win, you can't be my friend. So, like, mm -hmm. you should have these. So, like, you might not have as many as we have, but you right. should have. If you had the name. Three friends that gave you three three life changing pieces of advice. You should be able to do that. If you can't do that, you know you're hanging around the wrong people. Big facts. Because people are either going to be a deposit to your life or a withdrawal. Or withdrawal. So if you have more withdrawals than deposits, you're going to be feeling empty financially, mm -hmm. energy wise, all that. But if you have more people pouring into you than taking out of you, you will always feel full. So this is just a testament. To some of the people that we hang around. Some of the people who are friends, but who are also our mentors that gave us some amazing advice. So yep. we're going to share those pieces of advice with y'all. Absolutely. You want to kick us off? Yes. So uh, shout out to Ellie Talks Money. Ellie Talks Money. She was our first repeat guest on the podcast. Yes. Right? So Ellie Talks Money, great friend of ours. Damn near family at this damn, point. Damn near family at this point. Client yeah. of mine. Um, uh, she's having, she has a baby on the way. I was one of the first people to know. Like, yeah. just, yeah, so just really. I found out a little later than everybody else. I was... <laughs> <laughs> I ain't feel away, but I found no, I'm kidding. Yeah, um, so so super. I, I, now, I, now by default, I found out because we had to like help her with some family planning stuff. That, there you go. There you yeah, go. Yeah. There you go. There yeah. you go. Help me yeah, feel yeah. better. Um, but yes, Ellie has gave 
both of us just am amazing advice over the years. But and I remember like it was yesterday the first time I think yes. well at least I I think it was the first time, no it was the first time, time we both met. Okay, yeah, yeah we both came to LA. yeah yeah we both yeah. Met, met her in person uh, at Soho House. Yeah, and um, and man, she was like this was 2021. Yeah, yeah. So you know she her business had literally just like, had been taken off. And uh, as we were getting more and more to the online space, just like we're mind blown at like some Thought of the we were things. playing the game. Yeah, not playing the game. Some of the all. things that she was able to do. Yeah. And so, man, it was just, it, I just remember like it was yesterday, but yeah, man. And now it's, here we are, 2024. And uh, it, just, it just goes to show you getting connected to the right people can help you see things that you didn't even see for yourself. Yeah. And now we can give her some insight on some of the things that we're doing. So it's like a be really beautiful uh, exchange. Absolutely. And so, speaking of that day, uh, I remember the advice she gave me that day, like it was. Like it was yesterday. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we had met for the first time in Soho House. And I just remember Ellie because she was going live every, every day. single day. Sometimes, multiple times a day. Multiple times a day. So, we're like sitting at lunch or whatever. And um, I'm just like, I'm like, so like you go live every day. She was mm -hmm. like, yes. I was like, like, why? Like, how do you have the discipline to go live every single day? Right. And I never forget the analogy she told me. She was like, uh, so Carter, like, you watch sports? I'm like, yeah. She's like, well, like, if you missed the game and you turned on, like, ESPN the next day mm -hmm. and they didn't have the highlights, how would you feel? And I was like, well, I would be pissed. She was like, okay, right. well, what if the next playoff game you mm -hmm. missed again and they didn't have the highlights? And yeah. I was like, I'll be really upset. She said, what happened with the third day in a row? You, you missed the game. They didn't have the highlights. I said, I'll probably, watch, I'll probably stop watching ESPN. Right. She said, exactly. Mm. Your clients and your community and your fans look at you the same way. Mm -hmm. If you stop showing up one day, they lose a little bit of trust. Mm -hmm. If you stop showing up another day, they lose a little bit more trust. If you don't show up three, four, five, six days in a row, they will just stop listening to you Facts. because they, they know they can't count on you. Facts. And that just floored me. And I was like, well, I'm going live every single day. You got to outwork the competition, right? Yeah. It's like, for me, uh, brand is synonymous with trust, yeah. right? And it's very simple. If, if, I go, if, if, if the grocery store says they open at 8 o'clock and I go at 8.01 and the doors are closed, then now I have less trust for that grocery store, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, once you say that you're going to do something, or once people have an expectation of you, if you don't continue to align with that expectation, you lose trust, right? Which hurts your brand, mm -hmm. right? So I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think that's amazing advice. Whether it's going live, whatever your measure of consistency yeah, is, yeah, just posting once. It's yeah, happening. yeah, like, like it's, but it's just showing up. Yeah, whatever, whatever. How are you defined? There's shows that they have that they show up once a week on the same time, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not every day, but it's like whatever you decide, whatever your cadence is, whatever people grow to expect, you have to keep doing it if you want to maintain that trust. One thousand percent. So shout out to Ellie for that. Right now, that has kept us recording podcast episodes when it really didn't make sense. Yep. Right? Like, 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 like all the stars align, like, oh my gosh, like today has got to be a day that we got to skip it. Hey, I just got robbed at gunpoint. Probably shouldn't record a podcast episode tomorrow, but we're not going to, we never went, never missed a Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, so that, like, that was probably the toughest one. Yeah, that was probably the toughest one. That was one. the toughest one. Yeah. Um, so it's like <laughs> consistency, consistency, consistency. So shout out to Ellie for reminding us that if you have a brand, you must show up yep. all the time or whatever your cadence is. Yep. Cool. cool. All right. Um, so good friend of mine, Kenny Conwell, he's probably the first friend entrepreneur that I know, honestly. Like he like when I was pledging in college, he was like doing something, he was doing something entrepreneurial, right? Um <laughs> I'm trying so, to go to school, bro, and me, yeah, go to yeah. party tonight. We talk about entrepreneurship, bro. <laughs> yeah. So so he taught me this lesson a long time ago, and he said that it's easier to sell an existing customer than it is a stranger. Right. And what I took from that is that. Kind of like what we talked about in the last episode. It's like, if you have an existing client or customer that you're already serving, how can you serve them again? Because you've already established trust with them from that initial transaction versus trying to get a stranger, right? So how can you over-deliver and create new solutions for the people who you've already showed up for, who you've already served versus trying to always only get new customers? Like Some people, have they have so many emails on their email list. They have so many... Uh, people that, that, that have bought from them in the past and all they can think about is the next new stranger or customer that they don't have. Yeah, it's, right? like, it's, it's like stop stepping over the big pile of money, man. It's like if you already have this internal jackpot, which is your current clients mm -hmm. who've already paid you mm -hmm. and already trust you, if right. you could just find ways to deliver more value to them and, and, and then get them to pay you continuously, mm -hmm. do that first before going outside right. and start chasing new 
you know, shiny objects or new customers or whatever, because it always costs you more to acquire a new one. So I think that, you know, business owners can use that. I think that um, uh, whether you're new, old or, you know, or, or whatever, but like you just have to, like, you know, reap the internal gold mine first before you go chasing things outside. And I think that's a, that's a phenomenal lesson. Big facts. Yeah. Right? What did Kenny say at dinner? We was at dinner with him in Miami. And he said, um, dude, I'm probably going to butcher it. He said, uh, when like money is good, be good to the money. Or something, something like that. Oh, oh, I know you're talking about. What did yeah, you that, say? that bro, that floored me. That he said, like, when we if you're doing good with money, do good with money. It was something so, like that. Some, something I know what you're talking about. I can't okay. I can't think of the exact yeah. exact quote, but it's basically like, damn, what do he say? If you're doing good with money, I, I yeah, I'm gonna butcher it too. Yeah. But the concept of what he was, the spirit yeah. of what he was saying yeah. is if you are making a lot of money or making good money, right? Yeah. Like what are you doing with the money? Like, yeah. are you being a good steward of the money? Because if you're not, right, that money is going to leave you. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, a lot of times people, like, they just focus on making the money, making the money, making the money, but they're not work- They're not focused on what am I actually doing with that money? Yeah. Right? Am I investing it? Am I redeploying the capital in, in my business? Or am I just blowing this money and wondering why things aren't working out for me? Yeah. Right? You gotta go chasing out the bag because you just blew the last bag you just had. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so so Kenny, sorry for butchering the quote, but yeah, got, the, yeah. the spirit, <laughs> the yeah. spirit of it is right. When you are blessed and fortunate enough to get money, be a good steward of that money so that you can make the most of it. Yep. All right. Who's next? Uh oh, JP. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So shout out to JP, Justin Phillips, man. Um, a phenomenal entrepreneur. Was he another was he another repeat? He was another repeat guest. We've only had like three or four. We don't got him. Oh yeah, he was. Yeah, because we did him. In that was yeah. my, one of my favorite episodes yeah. on the podcast that we ever shot. So yeah. if you haven't searched Melanin Money, Justin P. That second episode was crazy fire. And uh, the reason I, I love Justin so much is I don't currently know another person who just gives as much free game to his friends as he does. Like and his audience. Yeah, and, and, and his audience. Yeah, but like he'll like go to a mastermind and learn to play and like. Right when here he's implemented, he'll like call me, call like, hey bro, I just like this crazy play. I'm I'm doing it right now. Do this X Y Z, bro. It's crazy game. And I and I literally hit him this year at the top of the year. I said, bro, like, what is your process of doing this? Because he's just so authentic with giving to other people. It's like anytime he ever needs something, bro, I'm dropping yeah. everything right to give to him. And like, and, and it's something we always talk about. How can you become someone? That when you call people, they are eager to pick up the phone. Because you know something good. Because you know it's something good. Like there, mm-hmm. there's a rare time I miss his phone call mm-hmm. because he's trained me so much that when I talk to him, something good, good, good value, thing, value's coming from it. Value's coming from it. So how can you align yourself to become a person where every time somebody reaches, every time you reach out to somebody, they look at you as if money's on the phone versus a bill collector trying to call, mm-hmm. right? Oh, I know they're going to need something. Yeah, it's like, oh, they need another favor. Like the sickest work, bro, that people do, yeah. the fake the checkup. Fake, the fake checkup. The fake checkup with the favor is, is yeah, crazy, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, that's crazy, yeah. Hey, man, just checking out. I hope everything going good, man. But uh, good. I know I just... Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, bro, now I'm definitely not answering the phone. So, right. um, yeah, I think the lesson here is, um, you know, how can you, you know, uh, strategically align yourself to be a person of value and start giving resources, game, links, whatever. Even It could just be a podcast link to a great episode, right. like the Mel and the Money Show, right. that, you, that you give somebody, like, hey man, I really, I know you're struggling with learning how to get customers in your business. Here's an episode I think that can help you, right? Mm-hmm. Something as simple as that, but like doing that, man, and being the person that everybody picks up the phone for right. is going to take you just your life to yeah. the next level. I, and I think when you put numbers to it, like, I think Gary Vee says it, like, in a way, because, you know, he gives away a lot of information. He doesn't, he doesn't sell anything direct to consumer, actually, outside of, like, his NFT project that he did, like, two years ago. Um, the way he puts it is, like, he, he's, he's always thinking about his funeral, which is maybe a little bit morbid to think about. But he's like, I want to just help so many people that, like, my family's going to have to have my funeral, like, in a stadium or something like that, right? He's like, and so, but the way I think about it is, is like, if I can just do, so, if I can make one person's day every day that I'm alive, That's crazy. just one, right, person's day. Every day that I'm alive, right? Over the next decade, right? Like how many, that's the, what, how many people is that? Just uh, do 10. Is that 3,000? Yeah, is this added 6, zero? 000, Yeah, so like 3,600, so 3,650, 3, something yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah like, like just one person a day, something that they won't, that they won't forget. And it does, it's not going to take you long, yeah. right? It's like, it could be something as simple as, 
you saw somebody and they posted a fly outfit on Instagram, you, but you text them instead of comment. Yeah, I, just, I saw your I saw your outfit on Instagram. That was one of the best outfits you ever put together. Thank you, you know, whatever. Like that could have made their day. They because that, that, that was probably in the archives from a month ago. Yeah. They probably posted to make themselves yeah. feel better, right? <laughs> and then you personally text them like it, so. It it doesn't take much, right? So if you can make one person's day. Uh, every day, right? Like your your uh, relationship equity, which we always talk about, will be so deep, right? And you're not even doing it for that. It's just like, how how great would you feel after having a busy day, having a lot going on, if someone just intentionally took a moment to reach out to you for nothing, not to remind you about some document that they owed that you that they needed from you, or email that you didn't respond to, or uh, the family reunion is coming up and you ain't reserved. Like, hey. I just want to tell you that I, I I love you. I think you're one of the most amazing people and I hope you're having an amazing day. 20 seconds, 10 seconds, right? How easy would that be for you to do once a day, every day? You know what I mean? And so if you could become that person, not that you're doing it with the intention of seeking favors or being able to ask something in the future, but I can guarantee that when and if you do need support. When you, when you need support. When you do, yeah, when you need support, you'll have people. A plethora of people. Yeah, because like, man, when I hear, when I hear from George, when I hear from Carter, it's just it's something good. It ain't about what like what they need from me, what I owe them. Well, I like just genuinely checking in or just genuinely adding value. Either one, right? If you know something that they need, you can benefit from them, provide that. Or if you don't have something off the top of your head that you know, just show some love. That's it. Easy money. Right? But I'm not gonna let y'all hook that easy. I know JP done gave you some sauce. What's like an actual tip or a strategy or game or something that he's giving? Pick one. I'm even saying. even though that was, even though conceptually that was good. Yeah. I, I need, uh, yeah. dog. Man, it's so many, dude. <sighs> okay. That's the greatest stall tactic. Man, I, I, it's, what it's, couldn't it's, I say? Because like, okay, I, I'm, not, I'm just not trying to like, I don't want it to go over people's heads. Nah, I get, I get a lot it. of a lot of the game at this point is is really, really technical. Um so I would say, dog, I'm I'm really, I really can't. Do, do, okay, so from a <laughs> I hate you, bro. <laughs> so hit, hit this from from a from a from a content creation standpoint. One 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 of the plays that he gave me is that when you're creating content, um, put fear in your headline more than more than um more than like I don't want to say greed, but like like tell them not to do something versus doing something. So pain, like pain over pleasure. Pain over pleasure. So like like um if you're posting about uh taxes, don't put hey, you know, here's five ways to save fifty thousand dollars in taxes. Mm -hmm. But like by doing this, not doing this will cost, cost you fifty thousand dollars in taxes, right. right? And just switching the headline to pain over pleasure right. has taken my content, my followers, um just to a whole new level, my virability to a whole new level because mm. people are more likely to click something right. if it's fear-based than pleasure-based because they don't know you yet. Right. So doing that shift in my content just took it to another level. Yeah, because when you think about it, like humans are really only motivated by two things. It's to avoid pain or to seek pleasure. And they're way more likely to avoid pain. Like we, we they're got, experiencing it right now. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, what's, the, what's the Vegas say? Like people are twice as likely to like fear loss over, over winning, right? Right, you, you right, know, right, you, right? You know what I'm saying? So people would rather like they would rather play, play not to lose, lose than play, play to win. win. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I just, I'm just feeling all your sentences. Huh? I, mean, I mean, bro, you've just <laughs> been around each other for a long time, dog. <laughs> all right. Uh, next, which is Maya. So Maya, a good friend, Maya Elias. Shout out to Maya Elias. I've known her for since 2013, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, she built like one of my first websites, and she was even back then. She knew the power of premium pricing. Um, <laughs> you say you doing? You doing? This is this for a website, which right? Is one <laughs> website. Um, but yeah, and that could be the lesson in and of itself, but that's not the one I'm going to use. So she taught me the power in niching, right? In terms of like picking an audience, super serving that audience, knowing that audience in and out, and just in making your business being able to run on autopilot. Because when you know your audience in and out, right, then you know what their quirks, you know what makes them tick, you know all their pain points. And as a result of that, it's, it does two very distinct things. Number one, it attracts uh, the same person over and over again. Number two, it creates this really hyper-focused tribe or community of people who all have the same problem. So instead of you having to be the, the fearless leader who is all-knowing, now you have this community of people who are able to kind of mastermind with each other mm -hmm. because they all have different, they all have the same problem or the same goal, and it might just be at different places on the journey, right? So one of the one of the most challenging things is to try to be something to everybody because then it's like it's almost like if I walked into Chick-fil-A 
and I asked them for a burger, they were like, they'll be like, well, no, we don't, we don't make those, right? Like, this is what we focus on. And the reason why we can make these chicken sandwiches this great is because this is what we're known for. This is what we focus on. Because if you don't pick a focus, it's impossible to scale. Right? It's yeah. impossible to scale. And I think both lessons actually taught you ever actually go into one. So you mentioned she taught you about premium pricing. She taught mm -hmm. you about niching. The only way you can charge premium pricing is if you niche. Because, as an example I love to give, is that if you went to, if you need the heart surgery and you had an option between the general surgeon and a heart surgeon, which would you pick? Mm -hmm. Everybody obviously says heart surgeon. Right. What if the heart surgeon charged 10 times as much? Well, I'm still going heart surgeon because this is the problem I need to solve. Right. So the reason that she's able or anybody's able to charge premium pricing is because you have specialized knowledge for a specialized mm -hmm. group of people. Right. So um, but they, they, that's the reason they say there's riches in the niches is because if you niche down and they will solve somebody's specific problem, mm -hmm. they will pay you more than the generalist because generalists might not solve the problem the right way. Big facts. So I think Big that facts. both lessons actually go in one. Big facts. I can see that. I agree. Yeah. Um, so who we got next? Uh, Circle of CEOs? Yeah. So shout out to Circle of CEOs. Uh, Neo, Him500. Justin uh, Owens. Justin Owens, Alex Get Energy, and Justin... No, um, not Justin. Uh, um, personal trend. Mr. Two Weeks. Mr. Two Weeks. How, that's, that's, that's his real name. Is his name Justin Owens? No, it's not, it's not Justin. Okay. I don't think so. Because it's Justin Owens. Right. I'm saying, but I think it's two Justins. I don't think so. Okay. Well... I, Mr. Two Weeks Out. Mr. Two Weeks Out. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I got it. Don't verify. It's, yeah, not, it's not Justin. Okay. I, I can guarantee you. How much you want to bet on it? Jason. Jason. Ah. Jason lobbed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. That, you could have had a bet, brother. <laughs> you could have had a bet. I was about to ask you before you locked in. I was like, hey, you want to put something on it? <laughs> but yeah, so five phenomenal entrepreneurs at the peak of their game, mm -hmm. right? At the peak of their game. They're both they're all crushing it, going hard. And my first major conference that I went to as a new entrepreneur was the first Circle of CEOs conference, I believe it was in 2021. Mm -hmm. um, and I just remember like being a fanboy of these five like dudes is killing it on stage. And what it mm -hmm. did for me, it was like, yo, like they all are killing it in their respective right. But they believe in collaboration over competition. Right. Right. And is there a world where people at the top of their game could come together Mm -hmm. and build something bigger together right. than they could on their own, mm -hmm. right? So that lesson back in 2021 has obviously exponentially grown in the back of my mind. Like, all right, one day I want to do something that's bigger than just me. Right. It's, here we are with Melanin Money, right? right? So just the lesson of collaboration over competition is, is huge in building something that's going to be bigger than you can ever build on your own. If you have the foresight and the, the, the less in ego mm -hmm. to be able to do it, it could work out amazingly for you. 100%. 100%. Yes, I, I, I agree. I, I couldn't have said it better myself. There's just power in collaborating, right? Power in, you know, not having to be all things to everybody. Power in having, being able to have, uh, confide in somebody who gets what you're going through. Because mm -hmm. um, when they say it's lonely at the top, I think what, what, they, what people really mean is like, when you're, if, when you're at the top of the company that you're building, you can't instill doubt in the people that are working for you, yeah, right? So you like can't, you can't have that vulnerable moment, right? Because like, well, shoot, maybe I need to start looking elsewhere because he don't sound, he, yeah. he sound a little shaky. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't instill doubt um, in the people that, that are working for you, right? So, so so if you don't have a co-founder or something like that, it's kind of hard, right? So like I think collaborate if you don't have a co-founder, but at least at minimum collaborating with other people who understand the struggles, understand the pitfalls, it just it makes the journey more fruitful to go through. What's up, family? Welcome to the very first mm -hmm. ever Business Spotlight, where we highlight and amplify members of our Melanin Millionaires Club who are doing absolutely amazing things. And we were in New York. We couldn't think of a better person to start off our Business Spotlight with other than Fern. How you feeling? I, I'm so chuffed. Thank you for having me. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so honored. I have no idea. Like, when I got your message, the first thing I was like, I'm like, I'm going to let my husband hear this. Honey, 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 you got to hear this. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, we were just thinking about it. It's like, you know, our, our podcast is growing down. This is the year where we be, get a lot more intentional about partnerships and sponsorships and all those things. And like, and there's been people who've been asking us like, hey, can we get on the show? Can we pay you? But like, our thing is, we want to maintain the journalistic integrity of like our, our, our show, right? We don't want to just like let anybody just on, on the platform. And when we think about highlighting and amplifying anybody, it's the people who we have a direct access to that we know they're doing the right things. They have amazing businesses and we just want to use our platform to amplify them. So yeah. now that's what we're going to do. We're going to spotlight your business, spotlight you as a person mm -hmm. and just tell the world a little bit more about you and what you got going on. Yeah. Oh. So Ferns, give them an in insight on 
who you are, um, and and then what you do, and then we'll go from there. Okay, well, firstly, I'm an author. As you can see, I have my books out here. Yes. Absolutely. Carter, George, if you kindly hold them up and, and do a little um, shameless uh, plugging. Thank uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm an author, and then I wrote this book uh, because I was in the world of education. So I mm. do a lot of training mm -hmm. and that. And then I thought, you know what? I can really take this to another level yeah. and then teach people how to give better presentations mm -hmm. so that their message rings through, right? Yeah. So many of us suffer from death by PowerPoint, right? at least have sat through a lot of death by PowerPoint yeah, yeah. at the mm -hmm. end of the presentation. You're like, okay, what did I just hear? Right? Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. me, I just think that's such a waste. It's, you know, it takes so much courage to get up there and speak in front of an audience. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do it, if you're going to get up there, right. share your message, make it stick, make it count. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't want to waste the audience's time. You don't waste your time. You've right. all that time and effort. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how can I make people who have to get up and speak Mm -hmm. Get their idea out there so it resonates and it connects, right? So that mm -hmm. for me also, you know, listen, in all honesty, I used to be a death by PowerPoint or two. Yeah. Because right? yeah. I followed yeah. that example. Yeah. Right? yeah. Click, click, know, click. Yeah. Oh, oh horrible. And I'm like, you know what? During the height of COVID when it was just nothing but Zooms and we're all turning to Zoomies, so I'm like, there gotta be a better way to do this. Yeah. So that's what inspired me to write the book. Okay. And then I thought, you know what? I can go a level deeper and do this as a digital course. Because mm. I come from that world of um, higher education. I train a lot of people in sort of communication skills and whatnot. So I thought, you know what? People learn differently. Yeah. So let's put this in like a visual way where they can see, right. do other things. Mm. And then I thought, hey, this is giving more traction. Mm -hmm. right? What can I do to now take it to the next level where if they want that accountability? Because how many of us sign up for courses right. and think, I got plenty of time to do it? I mean, that's the... 70% of people don't open them. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Or, or they just don't finish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's like, how can I bring Bring you across that finish line. Right. How do I give you this accountability right. where I will walk you through, you actually make this presentation, mm -hmm. I'll give you those tips and tricks that I know mm -hmm. will get the engagement and all that. So, you know, you don't have a sucky presentation. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's how I was able to then think about the, the coaching model in a way that, you know, all these things become part of my ecosystem, my yeah. digital ecosystem. So I have a book, I have a course, and I have a coaching, um, uh, a coaching, a group coaching session where mm -hmm. I can build out a business yeah. that gotcha. then gave me the courage to pull the plug on my nine to five. Ooh. Hey! I will be completely honest. I was scared shitless to do it, but you know, <laughs> it's, when you get to a point in your life, and I've been in this field of higher education in adult learning mm -hmm. um, for about fifteen plus years, okay, yeah. and. And I've loved the experience, mm -hmm. but you know, when you're working in institutions, sometimes it's really hard to grow yeah. and really hard to, to do things that are innovative when you're hampered by systems. Right now. Yeah, and it gets to a point where you're yep. just running up against the wall, right? I'm like, you know, I'm just tired. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like Sisyphus pushing up this, this boulder and it's like, this isn't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I'm right. like, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm going to buy, I'm going to bet on me now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that if I just, you got to cut those safety boats, right? It's like, yeah. Like Tony Robbins always said, right? If you're gonna, Take gonna swim island. to the island, you're uh, gonna cut those safety boats. Burn right? the boats. Go. Burn right. the boats. Yes. All right. So um, notice it, June 30th, last day on the job. I'm like, okay, yeah. all in yeah. as a mompreneur, and uh, mm. it's it's. I've never been more scared, but also <laughs> exhilarated. Scared and fulfilled at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All those things, hey, right? Look, yeah. you, you don't need coffee in the morning when you're nervous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't have fear on your back. But so yeah. here's something I want to ask you because like. We've made millions of dollars from presentations, whether it was in person yeah. or online. And I personally don't think there is an easier way to make money than having a good presentation and then delivering value, obviously. Absolutely. And then giving the audience that you just deliver value an uh, opportunity to continue learning from you, right? So people can make a lot of money if they learn how to give good presentations. Yes. So um, in, 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 this, in, in your book, I'm reading a quote that says, designing a presentation without an audience in mind is like writing a love letter and addressing it to, wh to whom it may concern, right? Yeah. So how does someone high level cultivate a proper presentation to deliver a good message to an audience? So first of all, you should know your audience, right? Mm -hmm. Who are you speaking to? Why should they give a shit? Right, 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 <laughs> right? I, think, yeah. I think I always sort of dial in that first thing to like know who your audience is so they can resonate with your message. Mm -hmm. Because if you're just talking to like, like, like that quote says, right? Writing a love letter to whom it may concern. Right. Well, you know what? You're just going to get riffraff and not the yeah. man of your dreams or the, whoever your ideal person is. So you have to know that target audience. Who are you mm -hmm. speaking to? I spoke to a lot of frustrated uh, educators mm -hmm. <laughs> who were tired of this system. Oh my God, we always have to penny pinch and all that sort of stuff. It's like, okay, I know mm -hmm. that pain. Mm -hmm. I can speak to that pain. Now I'm like, listen, I'm a mompreneur that had to pull the plug and, and do all these things. So I now can speak to those aspiring mompreneurs 
entrepreneurs who want to do this, mm -hmm. right, and, and and tell you the challenges that I'm. It doesn't always have to be perfect. You don't have right. to know everything. You gotta be somewhat like 10% percent ahead of the crowd. Mm -hmm. But people like to see the messy message. Right? They want to see you yeah. go through it so that you have this no like and trust factor, right? So yeah. you're building the authentic side of you. So it's like, listen, I have I've done presentations that have completely bombed. Mm -hmm. Right. So but what is that lesson that you're gonna you either win or you learn, right? My my first webinar I did. Learn with like, fern. You learn with fern. Please, <laughs> tell, me, please tell me you please tell me you use that. I have yeah. my hashtag learn okay. with fern. Okay. Okay. Stay on it should point. be learn with fern okay. com. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> if you don't if you don't have that URL I by know. now. Well I have fernchan.com so like okay. fern like the leaf chan like Jackie. But, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. but yes that's my hashtag like learn with fern. Learn with Fern. Learn with Fern. Yeah, we can wrap it all day. A, a yeah. lot of stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, audience in mind is a big thing. And then just, 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 you know, speaking to that. But also, I always say, tune in to that favorite station of theirs, W I I F M. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? Yeah. What's, What's it for me? Because, yeah. yeah. right? you know, why are they listening to you to begin with? Right. You obviously have something to offer that they're already there. You always mm -hmm. have an intended audience right. who mm -hmm. will show up, whether mm -hmm. you're held captive because it's like a yeah. board meeting or whatever, or if it's a conference. Mm -hmm. People show up to your session because you have something that is like, oh, this person has something to say that I am interested about. Right. So that's already like, you already have you know, a hook there. So the mm. question is that how do you maintain that to keep them listening to you? And it's not by citing facts mm -hmm. and figures, right? Being very linear about it. Like you, you mentioned storytelling and that's right. one of the big keys. Yeah. How do you emote? People remember stories. They do. Yeah. They remember stories because our brains are wired yeah. to right. think in stories, right? Yeah. And when they hear a story, they go, oh, they're picturing themselves in the story. Nobody mm -hmm. thinks of themselves as the victim or the villain. They're like, I'm the hero. How am I, Luke Skywalker, yeah, going yeah. to defend? Yeah. <laughs> And defeat yeah. Darth Vader and right. save the world from, from you know the dark side, right? right? Because we want that champion's journey, and then we mm -hmm. see ourselves in that. So I think yeah. there's power, there's power in um in the narrative, hundred percent. And yeah. then how do you craft it into also your message? Where at the end it's like, now I want you to remember because people don't remember boring, mm -hmm. but they remember when they feel something. That's yeah. what Maya Angelou yeah. said, right? Yeah. People don't remember what you said, but they remember how you, how you, you made them, how how you made them how feel. You so, made them so here's my question, right? So you have somebody who's like, now clearly, you have something that you you can't buy, right? This energy, this that you like, it's just it's infectious, right? So what would you say to the person's like? I just don't know if I could if I could deliver a presentation like her. Like how like how how do you overcome the limiting belief for someone who just has stage fright or feels like man I don't know if I could if I could do it right? I could have the best words and the best story, but like my delivery isn't going to be like hers. Yeah. Well, first of all, you don't want your delivery to be like me, <laughs> right? Yeah. You yeah. want it to be like you, authentically right. you. I am I am loud. I am a lot of things. You know, give me the mic and you'll never get it back. So never, <laughs> never do karaoke with me. I'm just letting you. Know. <laughs> but, but you know, that's me. That's yeah. authentically me. I don't mm. apologize for it. But not everybody's like that and it's okay because right. being you you're going to attract that somebody who's shy who's right. going to be quiet but they're going to admire you so much for having mm -hmm. the courage to mm. get up there so they can see themselves in you mm. not everybody's like me not everybody's a loud Asian yeah. who, you know yes. <laughs> <laughs> who, who has no qualms about letting you know her words fly mm. um, so yeah. again right who are you mm -hmm. and always know that there's somebody out there that will resonate with you mm -hmm. that you will connect with um, because 100%. they need to see themselves in you. Hundred percent. Right? Yeah. So, what are some what are some some do not dos, right? Um, that you want to warn people about when they have a presentation. Like, what are like top three things not to do if you want to have a good presentation? Like, one thing I do know is don't have more than like two lines on a slide because people are going to stop listening to you and, and they're going to start reading, reading your yeah, slides. Like, like yeah. what's some things like the major not dos that people need to know? Never read from the PowerPoint slide. <laughs> <laughs> do, do not use it like a teleprompter. That's yeah. that's my biggest beef, right? People's oh, yeah. like, they use it like a crutch. They start to put one bullet point and they they, they, they put everything they want to say so it's like mm -hmm. this, right? It's yeah. like eight point font and you're like, oh gosh, this is like a read along, right? It's no longer a, a, yeah. a presentation. Yeah, yeah. So for right, me, right. first thing is like, don't read from your slide. Use it as a visual aid. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always prepare for myself in mm -hmm. case, you know, tech shit happens. And yeah, it always yeah. happens where it goes, right. you know, down. Like it happened to me once in a ballroom full of people looking at me. And the tech guys don't want to be seen and, and everything just goes dead, right? Yeah, yeah. How do you prepare to go on without the visual aid? So mm -hmm. always... Think of that as just a visual aid. You mm -hmm. are the subject matter expert. You should right. already know your stuff when you go on anyway. Mm -hmm. And if it falls apart, it's okay. It's okay. Have a conversation. And yeah. you know what? Things are not going according to plan, but 
let me have this conversation with you and, and we'll, you know, I'll still share this information with you, but tell me what questions do you have. Yeah. No, it just, uh, as a quote in here, say, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand, you don't understand it well enough. Right. We talk about that all the time. Like mm -hmm. if, if you can't find a way to explain it simply to your audience, it probably means you don't know, know it, it well enough. enough. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. And so for the person who's like, you know what, I'm ready to get out of my own way. I'm ready to learn how to speak and take my, my career to the next level. Uh, how could they potentially learn from you so they can, you know, do that? Oh, thanks for asking that. By all means, go to my website, mm -hmm. fernchan.com. It's fern like the leaf, F-E-R-N, mm. and chan like Jackie. Mm. Hopefully y'all know who Jackie Chan is. <laughs> By now, right? <laughs> yeah. I drop that reference sometimes and these kids look at me all dough. I'm like, oh my uh, God. Yeah. I know, I know, <laughs> yeah. right? So I have a lot of resources there, but I also offer free webinars at times on how to be a better presenter. Mm -hmm. uh, but also I have challenges happening and boot camps to also help you move your ideas into a way that will make it stick, right? Because there's nothing worse than not being able to share your genius and make your point stick and mm -hmm. be heard. So that's mm -hmm. that for me is is what I do not want to happen for you. And I want to make sure that your genius shines out there. I mean, you have a message worth listening to 100%. and you have an audience waiting to hear that secret sauce that only you can provide. So mm -hmm. don't ever think that what you have to share is not worth listening to. I think that's part of the limiting belief yep. that we have. 1, I'm not special because I'm sort of thinking about, I'm not special. Georgia and Carter are like way up there. Mm -hmm. But you know, we all start somewhere. Right. We all start somewhere. And it's from the gems that I'm getting from you two that I'm so thankful for. Just, just executing on small steps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here's another thing that I'm... Um, like you, you have Myron as your, as mm -hmm. your um, mentor. One of my, and yeah. two are my mentors and among other people. But um, this quote that I heard from somebody, I want to say it's Barry Baumgartner. She says, do it messy, do it scared, mm -hmm. do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So don't wait for it to be perfect because you'll never be perfect. Aim for yeah. progress. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. better to just get it out mm -hmm. there rather than get stuck in this analysis by paralysis. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm my hair's not right. Oh, you know, yeah. nobody cares. <laughs> it's right. the content. Just get right. your message out there mm -hmm. that people will like resonate. Sometimes people want to see the messy and it's okay. So just it do does. it uh, mm -hmm. because I think that's where the magic is too. I couldn't agree more. I, I have a similar quote and mine is, you can live in the house while it's being renovated. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Right? Um, people forget that. Like, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be done. You can always make those updates. But we we really appreciate you being our very first and special uh, sponsor spotlight um, because we love what you do. We think Thank that you. more and more people need to know about it because presentations, I mean, we always talk about asset classes, is your intellectual property, right? And that intellectual property can take you to places that you couldn't even imagine if you get it dialed in and you're the person to help them do just that. So what we're going to do is in our show notes, we'll link... Uh, your I think they get a free chapter. They, they do, so you can get a download a free chapter of my book. Okay. I mean, there's nothing more powerful than what's between your ears, and that is telling cool, y'all, right? Okay. So this knowledge between your ears is what you can generate ideas and income from, right? Mm -hmm. Then you can go buy that real estate. But until yeah. then, yeah, <laughs> work yeah. with what you got. Focus, focus learn, on, go yeah, learn how to monetize your message and focus on you until the focus is on you. So. Go to www.fernchan.com to get all the resources um, uh, and, you know, learn how to monetize your message and start to multiply your money. So uh, other than that, we loved having you on. Thank you for being um, an avid person in our community. And we look forward to watching you grow. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah. You can also, and you can also make more money, too, as a result. That part. So, if you want some icing on the cake. Yeah. Um, That's fast so far, right? I think so. Yeah, Ellie, JP, Kenny, Circle CEOs. And that's four. Oh, Maya. Maya. Okay, five. Right. So five right. more. Okay. Yeah. So uh, next on the list, we have David Shans. Yes, a good brother, David Shans. Good brand, David, David Shans. Good brother, David Shans. We went on the, we did a podcast tour together in 2023. Three? Three, yeah, the, like the, 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 the yeah. years are blurring together. Yeah. Uh, 2023, along with Donnie. Shout out to Donnie. And one of the lessons I think almost every entrepreneur, at least in this era, can can attest to is the power of creating your own stage, right? Uh, the Social Proof Podcast has definitely been a platform, almost as a rite of passage, that uh, you know, all, a lot of entrepreneurs, not every single one, but a lot of entrepreneurs in this era have been able to go on, get traction, get awareness, and really amplify uh, their message and who they are. So I think the lesson that David provided is the importance of Importance of creating your own stage, mm -hmm. right? Um, not waiting for other people to put you on uh, their stage, right? Because he has a podcast and obviously he has a lot of guests. But at the same token, 
him having that stage elevated him, right? Mm -hmm. he, he was able to now be known as one of the go-to platforms for entrepreneurs, right? So it's like, I think you've seen an emergence of podcasts over the past three, four years. And I can honestly say that you would have to be attributed a, a large portion of the credit to the success of the Social Proof podcast, right? People went on, saw the success and the traction they got and realized like, man, maybe I should create a podcast. Maybe I should have something to amplify my voice where my only goal is to provide value at scale. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's power in creating your own stages. And we can't, you know, there probably wouldn't be a melanin money show if we didn't look at social proof as um, the catalyst for doing right. that and helping us create our own stages. Speaking of creating our own stages, the Melanin Money Award show. Yeah. Was a motherfucking stage. That was a stage. That was a stage, brother. That was that, a stage. That was a stage. More, more to come. More to come. More you know what I'm saying? If that's, if that's the worst it'll be, I'm scared for, for 2024. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's going to be crazy. Indeed. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay so, tuned. So shout out to David Shans and Donnie for Social Proof Podcast. Mm -hmm. Amazing pillar in the entrepreneurship community. Never, never forget to create your own stage. All right. Um, who else we got? Nikki. Nikki? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nikki, yeah. Nikki Saunders. Uh, the GOAT when it comes to content creation. Um, <clears throat> I forgot how me and Nikki met, but um, she's gave me just a phenomenal advice about like how to build content the right way and how to build a brand the right way. And um, well, I think, I think one of the be best pieces of advice that um, she's, she's shown me um, is how to like, not just create high quality content. Cause in, in, in the content space, there's a lot of noise now. So mm -hmm. how can you can create compelling content and storytelling content mm -hmm. versus just showing up and saying, Hey, like buy my stuff or like, Hey, right, like, right, right. when she does content, she does content the right way. She like, you can embed a story. You can embed a story in your content and, and embed your product in the content. And if you do it the right way, mm -hmm. you won't even people won't even realize that you're selling. Perfect example: the ad, American we, Gangster, the American Gangster ad, mm -hmm. right? Um, we just shot, which is going viral right now. Um, it was a the the point of the ad is to tell people about a, a free class that we're teaching, mm -hmm. but. People didn't even realize it was an ad until at the end. They were right. watching a live yeah. story. I had several people ask, like, are y'all like, like about to drop this as like a little mini movie or a series? I was like, you never know. Yeah. Hey, too. <laughs> it you depends, know right? It depends. So yeah. um, she's really taught me the power of storytelling within content, and that'll help you stand out in a world of increased noise. Big so that, that's the lesson I learned from her personally. Big facts, big facts. Uh, so another person we had on the list was uh, Michael McDonald uh, of Earn Your Leisure. Uh, so I actually just recently got connected with him, but like as we are trying to put more effort in taking our podcast to the next level, you know, we're seeking out, you know, guys from people who've done it at the highest level. Mm -hmm. And one of the gems that he shared with me is like, if you're already creating the content, why not expand upon it to be able to get more out of it? So for example, we have a show to release every Wednesday on audio, YouTube, et cetera. But what we weren't doing is creating now, we have our short form that we were just purposing, repurposing on social media and shorts, mm -hmm. but we weren't creating segments on YouTube. We're taking, let's just say, three to 10 minute segments and repurposing them on YouTube and also repurposing them on your audio outlets. Because the thing that's powerful in the audio outlets, people don't know, especially from a sponsorship standpoint, is all based upon downloads. So when people subscribe to your channel, like it automatically counts downloads the downloads. every episode. Exactly. Okay. So if you had, go from one segment, to four, you qu overnight quadruple your downloads, right? So I was like, yeah. yeah. I was like, I owe you more, I owe you more than this, right? So, <laughs> so shout out to him. That was just, that was one of, like, we literally had a, a meeting with our, our internal podcast team mm. last week and it was an hour long, like giving him like all the gems uh, yeah. that, that I got, I got from Michael. But that was one that stuck, stuck out to me because I know a lot of y'all have long form content, especially if you have a podcast, like create segments, chop that thing up, not just shorts on social media, but chop it up and put it on the audio outlet if you have a podcast and also on YouTube as well. Yeah, it goes back to that more, better, new framework, right? Like, you're already doing something well. Mm -hmm. If you just do more of it, and it's not even doing more, it just, it's just being more efficient. Right. Right, taking, take, taking something you're already doing and, 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 and quantifying it on, a, on, on, a, on another level by just adding more episodes. So we're going to be dropping what, something every day now? Every day? On audio? Every day on audio. Well, every day on YouTube, I think we're going to start out with four on audio. Four on audio. Four on audio. Yeah. Hey, stay tuned for it. Y'all ask for more content. Hey. Get what you tuned. ask for on this stay side. Stay tuned. Tap you know in, right? Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> um, all right. You want to do Myron? I want to say Myron for last. Say Myron for last? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Let's do Abu. All right. So unless you've been, unless you've been sleeping under a rock for the past 
six years, yeah, you've had to see at least one of Abu's ads. At least one. And I heard him say this quote that's definitely I've taken credit for now because like, I, I, gave, <laughs> I, gave, I, gave, I, gave, I gave him credit, you know what I'm yeah. saying, the first three times. Um, but a hit song is not made, it's marketed, right? And so when you wonder like, how are some of these songs like going viral? Like there's so much, there's so many better artists, Neo sold this, blah, blah, blah. It's just like, the game is the game. And what he taught everybody in this entrepreneur space is that you have to pay, be willing to pay to play, mm-hmm. right? Spend money to get in front of your ideal customer, right? And so just seeing like how religious he he is about paid traffic and the science and the way he thinks about it, I don't think I know, I don't think there's anybody that knows more about paid ads than Abu. Yeah. I, by my opinion, right? I'm pretty sure there's, some, there's somebody, but like he knows a lot and he really has helped a lot of people get out of their own way thinking like, oh, I can just create the best content and I can just post it on my page and I'm sure... You can. You can, yeah. But, or you can do both. Or you can do both. Right? Because like, here's a lesson I learned uh, about the, 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 like the hard reality of Instagram or any social media platform. Yeah. If you have a million followers, mm-hmm. do you really think a free platform like Instagram <laughs> is going to let your content be shown to, to a million, million people? people? No. You Spoiler are crazy. Alert. Spoiler, Spoiler alert. alert. That yeah. would like you know how I me mean? like, that's you know you know how much you'll be able to charge people to get like to like to like come on your page for a post. Mm-hmm. Like they like they're not gonna let you charge Super Bowl prices mm-hmm. on their platform when they get none of the cut. Big fat. So in exchange, they're only gonna let you see a small percentage mm-hmm. of your followers, and then you have to pay for the rest. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like. I used to be mentally against pay to play. Why would I? Why would I? Why would I pay for ads when I got a hundred thousand followers? Oh, mm-hmm. Carter, you're not gonna get it in front of a hundred thousand. You can have a hundred thousand all you want. You're gonna have to pay to get in front of those because a free platform is not gonna give you that much free advertising. Big fact. So that's why I think ads is ads plus content yeah. is the way is the true way to scale. If you want to, and, and the reason why it's ads plus content is because if you run ads, like people aren't always just gonna click on the thing overnight. What they're gonna do is they're gonna at minimum. Click on your page. Yeah. If it's nothing there, then it's like, okay, this yeah. is... I'm not- the ad gets them there. Your content mm-hmm. keeps them there. Right. Gives them a reason to stay. Exactly. And it, and it proves that you actually have something going on, yeah. which over time will drive down your cost per lead because you actually have a brand. Like, the difference between just like straight advertising and branding, right? Mm-hmm. If you advertise with a brand, then it's like, oh, I've seen that somewhere. It's like, so I don't have to see it 30 more times before I trust it, right? So that is where content comes in. So it's not like, oh, I'm going to spend as much money on ads and I'm going to get all these customers. Like, no, you still have to create a brand through content creation on your own platform. Then when people get awareness, oh, okay, this is legit. I like this. I'm going to like some stuff. Oh, it's legit. Not only am I just going to like it, I'm going to comment. Oh, now I'm only am I going to like and comment. I'm actually follow now. Oh, now I'm going to finally click the link in their bio. Mm-hmm. Right? But you got to have something going on. And so Abu has definitely taught all of us the importance of being willing to spend money to get in front of the people that you say you want to get in front of. 1,000. Okay. I think that's all. I think now. I think Myron's the last one. Myron's the last one. Yep. Myron. Okay. Myron Golden. All right. So, um, Myron has been my mentor for I think one or two years now. Um, I think I can call him a friend as many uh, as many times as we've talked. As much money as I spent with him, um, but um, I don't think there's any person that has made me more money in my life than Myron Golden. Um, and a, just a few of the lessons that he taught me. The first lesson he taught me was the offer you don't make is the offer they can't take, mm-hmm. right? So many business owners are doing everything but trying to make money, <laughs> right? Like, it's just a sad reality. Like, yeah. if you don't make an offer to somebody, it's virtually impossible for them to pay you. Right. So if you want to make more money in your business, simply make more offers. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. I didn't say make new offers. Mm-hmm. I didn't say you create a new product or service. Just make more offers to the people you're trying to serve. Right. Right. If you have an email list, make more offers to them. If you have a text list, make more text to them. If you have a, a, a just a following and you have a pot, like just make more offers on your show or whatever. Mm-hmm. The if you just if you 10x the amount of offers you make, you you're gonna at least two to four extra business. Over, you know, period. Not having to create more products, not having to spend more money on ads. People simply just do not make more offers to the people that they're trying to serve. Um, if you like, if you're at a restaurant, after you get done eating, if the waitress is smart, she's going to ask you, do you want some dessert? Exactly. Or she's going to come back, do you want, you want a drink? drink? 
Yeah. I kind of didn't, but... Yeah, make more offers. Yeah, exactly. but like, I kind of do now. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, like, the offer you don't make is the offer that you can't... Uh, they can't take is, which is a, one of the first lessons that took my business to the next level. The second lesson I think that probably gave me the most value is if you don't price your offer next to something, your, your customer will always price it next to something that, that costs less. I, want, I, want, I can explain it better than I just said it. So, I hope so. <laughs> I, was, I know the quote, but I'm butchering it right now. So if, you make, if your product or service costs $1,000, the mm-hmm. moment you tell your customer the price, they're going to compare it to something cheaper. Mm-hmm. Oh man, thousand dollars! I I can get this for yeah. Two. I, I can I, I can get a pair of shoes for two hundred. I can get a flight for four hundred. Mm-hmm. I can go to eat for one hundred and fifty. Mm-hmm. I can't do any of these things because these are all these things I like to do, and they're right. cheaper than what you just told me. Right. right? So if you don't give a if, if you give them a price, they're going to always compare it to something that costs cheaper. Mm-hmm. Therefore, they might say no to your offer. Right. But if before you make the offer, mm-hmm. you price your services compared to something that costs more, it will change their paradigm. So, for right. example, let's say the, the, my, my, my cost for tax services was $1,000. Before I tell you how much it costs, mm-hmm. I'm going to show you how much it costs to not work with me. Right, I'm going to show you right. that you're currently already overpaying taxes mm-hmm. by $10,000. Right. So, for me to solve that problem, it's That's only going to cost $1,000. 1000 bucks, right. A thousand compared to ten thousand is cheap. A mm-hmm. thousand compared to a hundred dollars is expensive. So you always want to like give your customer, if you can, not only something that costs more, but something they're already paying mm-hmm. that costs more. Facts, right? So if you don't have your, if you if you're selling processes and systems, mm-hmm. and you're and, and then and then you, but if you don't show them that by not having their time back, they have to pay a babysitter. A thousand dollars a week right. to come over and watch the kids while you do this. Mm-hmm. If you can get that time back, you don't have to pay the babysitter anymore. Right. So you, if, if you find a way to strategically price your product or service next to something that costs more that they're already paying for, it will do like four to five extra conversions. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, so, guys, yeah. I mean that was a uh, you know a, how how long was that episode? Thirty minutes or so? Thirty, probably thirty. 30 minutes um, the sauce. Yeah, a, ma- a masterclass on really the power of relationships. Yeah. Like, like, like listen to what we're not saying, right? Yeah. Like, we just gave y'all a whole episode of gems that we have got from people in our ecosystem um, that have, you know, helped catapult, you know, our business. So, are you in the right rooms? Are you connected to the right people? And if you're not, you should be. At the very least, keep listening to this show. Yeah. Right? You're connected to us and, by, and by, by, through us, you just got connected to 10 new people Big who facts. you didn't know. So make sure you give them a follow or, uh, you know, whatever. Stay in touch with them as well. But that's been another episode. Here's here's what you do. Go to their page and say, if you didn't know who they were before, I'm here. I found you from the Melanin Money Show. There you go. There you go. Go Do do, do that, right? Um, But thank you all for tuning in to another episode of the Melanin Money Show. Make sure that you subscribe on YouTube. Leave a comment. Let us know if you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all that jazz. And leave a five-star review. If it's not a five-star review, don't leave the review. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right? Send me a DM and tell me what we can do better. But don't leave a four-star review. We, we, know, we don't want that. Yeah. Uh, but nah, until next time. Peace. Peace.